Hello and welcome to another edition of the Art Success vlog series. Um, or vlog, should I call it vlog? I think I'll call it vlog. Anyway, um, this one is about Wiz Kudwal and his interview was just published today actually, the 9th of September. Um, Wiz Kudwal is a very well respected Ghanaian artist. He lives and works in Ghana. He's 55 years old and he was born in Takaradi in Ghana. Um, his career has spanned more than 30 years. He has worked in both public and private collections worldwide and he has been described as a transcultural visionary and he gave some quite memorable answers so I just wanted to go over I think three or four of my favourite of the answers and then there's going to be a link below so that you can go and have a read of the interview for yourself. Okay, um, firstly when I asked him when he, if he remembered his first solo show and if he had made any sales from that first solo show, what he said was that um, he, nine years after graduating, he organised and curated, 100% funded his own solo show, which really hit home with me, because if you know anything about me, then you'll know that I've done it myself several times, specifically for my first show. And, um, but what really uh, impressed me was the fact that he, he, even though he did all of that himself, he sold half of his stock, half of the work that he had on show, he sold which was really impressive. Um, when it came to the starving artist question again, this is one of the questions I ask everybody, was um, that there's, there's this kind of pervading um, myth of the starving artist in the world. Um, and um, I was asking specifically if that myth um, or that theory, if you like, had um, impacted on him in any real way in his career and if it had how he had dealt with it and essentially what he said was that you know many artists will have that experience specifically being in Africa um, and or where he is in the world and sometimes not necessarily having access to um, certain resources that we would have here in the West um, and so but for him, even though the perception was that he was always okay, he said there were times, and I quote, where he was in stark need. And during those times, um, it, he channeled his energies in, and sometimes used the money that he did have specifically to buy art materials because he would rather have materials to be able to continue to make art rather than live in comfort himself. And also that he got creative. Um, and that made um, fashionable items for men and women, print, printed t-shirts and that kind of thing to bring some money in. So I found that very, very interesting and also quite inspiring, um, especially for those artists, uh, those of, of you artists who, who may be watching who, you know, there is no plan B. Um, you want to continue to produce art, so just finding different creative ways of making money um, while still doing your work. Uh, also, one thing that I ask specifically of African artists is the fact that if you are aware of what's happening in the art world right now, there is a um, an almost palpable shift of the Western consciousness in terms of the Western art world towards African art. It is very now. Everything African is very now at the moment, um, from fashion to art. Um, and so I was asking him specifically, you know, um, with in relation to artists like Ellen Atsui himself, uh, Uwusu Ankoma, Romul Tusumi, who I've also interviewed, um, what kind of effect he felt that would have on his career and also the career of other artists, African artists going forward. And what he said I found very interesting and, and that was that, well, yes, there is this shift, um, and artists would, a lot of African artists will inevitably um, benefit from that. He doesn't see himself as being one of those because he's, he, he sees himself as somebody who has already established before this African fashionable wave hit. Um, but then what's going to happen after the wave ends? And it will end, he said. It will end, and it's true because like all um, 
you know, fashions and fads, things come in and things go out of fashion. And so then what then happens to those African artists going forward after that? What then happens to them when it's no longer the in thing to be showing African art? Uh, so I found that very interesting. And another thing he said was that this idea um, of pandering to Western ideals when it comes to African art is outmoded as far as he's concerned. And Africans need to um, basically put systems in place to ensure that African art is appreciated and valued um, without and accepted without necessarily pandering to Western ideals um, so that there is a system in place to support African art going forward rather than necessarily relying on the West for that kind of validation and verification that African art is, is in. So I found that very interesting. And, and overall the interview was very inspiring and like I said it was only published today and even though it was only published today um, I've had a significant number of views and retweets and shares and things people are really interested and also some comments so you can have a look uh, the link to the interview is below and please feel free to comment rate and sub subscribe uh, subscribe I thank you very much for watching and until next time thank you bye